pin trading at Disney is extremely popular. When I worked there, I got asked all the time, and I still get asked all the time. What is pin trading? How do I start? What do I do? How much does it cost? And people even want to know, how many pins do you have? Pin trading is wildly popular at Disney World. So much so that it's actually even spread to other parks that aren't Disney as they try to copy them. Not always as successfully, but it's out there at Six Flags and Hershen Parks and others. They've all got pins for sale now and it all started with Disney. It actually started back in 1999 at Walt Disney World and the next year expanded over to Disneyland. Pins are sold all over the parks. Most of the gift shops have them. In fact, every Disney park has at least one store or shop that's basically all pins. You can go to Disney Springs and they've got a whole big pin store there. You can trade them cast members all over the place. Pins are relatively easy to find. They do tend to be a little bit expensive though. The cheaper pins, which you may find look a little bit like that on a little card, may start off at seven, eight dollars. When I was there, they were about five and a half for the cheaper ones. And then it goes up from there and you may spend 15, 20 dollars on a single pin. If you wanna buy starter sets, they've got those as well. They've got them with lanyards. They've got sets of four, six, eight, ten 10 pins. And you can buy them as a set a little cheaper per pin. You can get them at the Disney stores as well. Although now the Disney stores don't seem to carry as much or as often, which is kind of disappointing for those of us who don't live near Disney anymore. You can even buy them online. Although I would strongly caution against this. It's easy to look online and sites like eBay and other places and see these big packs of pins for like 25 pins for 20 bucks. Don't do it. They're fakes. They're what they call scrappers and they're basically imitation pins that have been made off old molds or even worse. They're broken, they're cheap, they're not good, they're not official. Don't buy pins in bulk. If you want real Disney pins, you're almost gonna have to buy them from Disney somehow. There are a few other places you can actually buy them for real, but generally if you want real pins, you gotta get them from Disney. Now why do you want real pins? You wanna trade them, of course, because trading is a whole lot of the fun of the pins. If you go to any Disney park or sometimes even the Disney stores, you'll see the cast members all wearing lanyards with pins on them. Those pins are available for trade. There's actual whole rules on what you can do. You can only trade two pins per day with a cast member, for example. Some lanyards are specifically for kids. They're usually colored blue or green, where the black is for anybody to trade with. If you see a cast member wearing a lanyard, and I'll pick up one of my sons, for example, you don't just walk up and grab the pins or whatever. You would ask them, hey, can I see your pins? And that cast member is going to do this. And they'll actually pull their pins out so that you can see the pins. And then you can say, hey, can I have that one? And you'll point to a pin. They'll take the pin off, put the back on. You give them a pin with the back, and then you can trade them. And they'll trade any Disney pin for whatever is on their lanyard. They basically can't say no as long as what you are giving them is an actual official Disney pin. And it is not broken or damaged. If it's a fake or damaged or not real, then they don't have to take it. But otherwise, a Disney cast member is, is supposed to let you trade the pin. Again, if you're an adult trying to trade on a kid's lanyard too, they can tell you no. They can't sell you pins on their lanyards, but they can point you to the ones for sale. There are actually pins that are exclusive on cast lanyards only, but those change all the time every year, so you never know which one's gonna be an exclusive cast pin. Sometimes there's hidden Mickeys, but then they start selling hidden Mickey pins for real, so you can't even use that as a sign anymore of what's real. Our actual first encounter with tr pin trading was back in 2001, the very first time we took our kids. Pin trading had been going on for about a year and a half or so at Disneyland, so it was still relatively new. We'd actually bought our tickets through the Disney Travel Agency, and they actually sent us lanyards along with a couple free pins for each one of us. A basic little Disney travel pin. And my kids had a ball with them. We've actually kept their original lanyards over the years, and this is actually their very first lanyards with their very first pins. Now, the pins that they got aren't worth very much. They're just 
basic pins, but they're special because it's their original ones. You know, Joseph, you can tell even then, was a little bit into Stitch, and Amber has, you know, a Snow White on there, and the crab from Little Mermaid, and a couple other things. And they would wear these, and they had an absolute ball trading pins the first time. We went back, took them again a couple years later. They get, were able to pick up a couple more pins, and here we are lots of years later, and they've still got their first pins. Now, of course, as we got older, we started doing a lot more pin trading, and then especially once I started working at Walt Disney World in Florida, yeah, the pin thing went a little crazy. Pins became an easy gift for us. There's cast sales where you can sometimes go buy a grab bag of pins, and that's one way that cast members can get cheap pins. And we would do that, and I would give those as gifts to the kids. My son started collecting Stitch, so you can see he's got a couple Stitch pins here. He also has another whole big lanyard filled with Stitch pins. So that is all pins. And like I said, that's part of my son's collection, so you can see those a little bit. My wife, she was into Belle. Belle from Beauty and the Beast is her favorite. So she tends to collect Beauty and the Beast pins. And there's all sorts of neat little ones. So she's got these, and she has a small collection of Belle pins. She's always looking for things like that. My daughter, on the other hand, is a big Tinkerbell fan. And I didn't bring her pins in because she actually has them attached on a wall hanging, and they border all around her wall hanging. So that's how my daughter collects them. It made an easy gift. Those grab bags also gave us other duplicates, which I was then able to bring into the parks, and I could trade them for other pins and have fun as well. I was always looking for a pin on sale. And, of course, after five years at Disney, well, then you end up with a lot of pins. And I mean a lot of pins. So, while I step off, let me show you how bad this is. Now, I know I showed this in one of my other videos, but you can kind of get an idea of some of the pins I have. Now, this is not as bad as a lot of people. We would actually see a couple guys that would walk around Disney World wearing long trench coats filled with pins. I can't imagine how heavy that was. This thing alone, just with the pins on it, is probably about 15 to 20 pounds. And then I usually have more pins in the pockets, which I'll show you as well. And I would collect pins for a variety of different things, different ones that meant different things to me. Uh, for example, I've got several different Magic Kingdom pins there. Uh, this is actually an Epcot Tour pin that you've got. And a lot of different castle things. I have several chipmunk pins because the chipmunks were actually some of my favorite characters to work with. I loved Figment. Figment was awesome. Um, and yes, I actually do have two of those pins. <laughs> and then I would also pick up different things, for example. There's some several there for different openings and different attractions. And as cast members, we could actually go to a cast store and buy pins specifically for different events and attractions. So, for example, I've got one there for the opening of the Monster Laugh Floor, as well as Nemo arriving at the Living Seas Pavilion. And we would get them for Candlelight Processional and Epcot's 25th anniversary. And I would try to collect pins that had special moments like that on it. I've got several Princess pins. Again, trying to collect all of the series. I'm missing one in that series there. And just other ones that kind of caught my eye. There's another series there of three, and again, I'm missing one. I tend to collect a lot of pins where I'm missing one or two. Cast pins that were a lot of fun were the safety pins. They actually had special cards for these, and I believe there's like six of those. I've only got a couple. A series of Narnia pins. Again, another cast pin for the construction. These were ones that we bought special. The cast store called Company D would actually sell pins specifically for cast members. They were a special price, limited edition, and the only way you get one is if you were a cast member and bought it there. And they would even limit how many you could buy. I didn't always get the cast pins I wanted because I didn't always have the money. They could add up in a hurry. But I tried to pick up pins for cast pins that would represent when I worked. So for example, I've got several different holiday pins, all marking different holidays that I worked at the parks. It was just kind of a way to remember when I actually worked. And I don't actually have all of them on here. I've still got several that are in the packaging. For example, a Halloween pin from that year and St. Patrick's Day. And there's another Christmas one right there and Thanksgiving. So I've got several different pins like that. So that's the holiday ones. I've got a small set of Fast Passes. Again, there's another series I never finished. Figment was also one of my favorite characters. I loved Figment. I started collecting these pins while I was working at Epcot. They actually made a whole collection of pins just with Figment where you could actually get Figment in the costume for that country. And they did one for every pavilion at Epcot. 
And I've got almost the whole entire set. I am missing one lousy pin, and that's the Canada pin. And I tried the whole time I was there to get that pin. I could never find it. So if you've got a Canada pin with figments, I would love it to finish my collection. Even now, I'll still go online sometimes to try to find that pin. I just can't find it anywhere. Drives me nuts. One lousy pin. <laughs> and you see, I've got a couple other series there. This is also another favorite series I had, and I wish I had started collecting them and didn't start till much later. Where Mickey was honoring heroes is actually based on a series of pictures, and they turned it into a series of pins. So that gives you a little bit of a look at, at some of the pins I've got there. And no, I haven't ever officially counted, but I think I'm somewhere around 100 and 150 pins. I've actually got several more that are laid out in front of me. There's a couple other special ones. I've got another cast member pin there. Earning my ears. Earning your ears is basically what a rookie cast member does. They wear this red ribbon that says that they're basically starting and they're learning everything. And so everybody, when you start off at Disney, has to earn your ears. And after you've learned what you're supposed to and you pretty much have everything down, then they'll come and take your ribbon. We would actually kind of laugh and tell people as they started, keep your ribbon on as long as you can. That way you can look and act dumb and get away with it a little bit because they think you're new. And I think I probably wore my earning my ears ribbon for like three months. <laughs> Only had to wear it for about two or three weeks, but yeah, I milked that ribbon. <laughs> had a lot of fun with it. Also for PhotoPass, we did get a couple special pins made. I only got one of them, um, and it doesn't even say PhotoPass on it. But Chippendale with the camera, of course, being a photographer at Disney World, I had to get the PhotoPass pin. We had actually designed a couple others, had a couple good friends of mine create designs for pins and submit them. And sometimes the cast member pin designs will actually get produced into real pins. Unfortunately, those that I saw didn't. And I believe there was one that was getting produced right as I was leaving, but I never got that one. But it was kind of neat, you know, it's a photographer. you got to have your photographer pin. I do actually have two other pins that I'm especially proud of. And they were actually given to me by my sister. And when you see them, you'll probably understand why I'm really proud of them. Because if you notice, that's actually the trading pin. And then there is the lapel. The lapel is just a basic 33. And if you look real careful in the middle of that, there's also a 33. These are actually from Club 33 at Disneyland. Which is... You can only get into if you are on their exclusive list, and it's a very small list of people who pay a lot of money to get it. My sister has actually been to Club 33 twice, I believe. And so the one time she went, she bought me a couple pins since I'm never going to be able to get in there. Uh, so those are real special for me. Do I still trade my pins? Basically, no. I live in Missouri. I don't live anywhere near Disney. And the pins I have, there really aren't any I want to trade at this point. When we did go down to Florida a couple years ago on a trip, we did go Disney Resort hopping, and we bought a couple pins to trade. But I don't really have anything I'm willing to trade at this point because I don't have any duplicates. Would I trade pins? If I had pins to trade, sure. If I had the opportunity, I'd love to be able to get more pins. It, pin trading is just a lot of fun. It's a great way to have something a little different to do at the park. My kids had a blast when we would go. We would always have a few extra pins because I bought them in those grab packs, and we would always take along two to six pins just to have something to trade, and we'd have a lot of fun. Hey, can I check out your pins? Let me see your pins. Ooh, that one looks good. And it just made for a lot of fun. So if you're going to Disney and you've got some extra money, you're looking for a fun souvenir that actually turns into an activity, check out pin trading. You'll have a lot of fun with it. Hopefully you won't get quite as many as me, but you'll probably build up a collection and have a great time. Thanks so much for watching. Love to hear what your favorite pins are or what else you've collected at Disney. Don't forget to like and share the video. Don't forget to comment below. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm.